Michaela Profeta is a London-based filmmaker with experience as director and assistant director, working in short films, music videos and corporate videos. He is also a co-founder of Studio Odyssey Productions, a London-based video production company. Michaela moved to London to pursue his passion for filmmaking and studied film at university. As someone with no prior experience, the foundation here equipped him with useful basics that he benefited from later on. His second year was impacted by the Covid pandemic, but Michele didn't get discouraged and started preparing his short film for the final year. This film was a great experience and met some success at festivals. While studying, Michele juggled his part-time job, along with building his career through side gigs in the film industry. Listen to this episode to get inspired by Michele's ambitious plans, hear more about studying film in Italy and find out details about what it's like to do a foundation here. Enjoy! Hello Mick, thank you for joining us today and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Thomas. Can you please try to introduce yourself? Yes, sure. My name is Michele. I'm a filmmaker based in London and I mainly direct and I also do lots of AD on the sides. I'm a first AD on music videos, on short films. I have experience, you know, different formats behind the scenes, music videos, short films, uh, I did some commercials and I co-founded a production company called Studio Odyssey Productions with two of my course mates are uh, Middlesex University, Joao and Eli, and yeah. So judging from your name, do you come from Italy? Yeah, yeah, I'm Italian. I came to London when I was 19, six years ago, and yeah, I mean, it's been a while, but I still hold the accents, as you can <laughs> tell. I got a thick accent. No, all of us have accents, so no worries. Yeah. <laughs> So why did you go to London? Was it to become a filmmaker? Yes and no. I did want to be a filmmaker, a director, since I was 16, 17. But to be fair, I didn't really know what it meant. I just liked films and, you know, I wanted to make some. But then it was pretty hard for me to, you know, approach the world because I was kind of shy. I didn't know, like, do I go to high school, university? So I kind of put it on the side for a while. And then I came to know that one of my cousins, she lived here in London and I took the opportunity just to come and live here because I love traveling and I took it as a challenge. And I worked for one year as a sales assistant and one of my co-workers, she did business, something like that. And she told me that here in UK it's pretty easy to, you know, you have easy access to university, you know, with the student loans and stuff like that. So I said, you know what, this can be an opportunity for me to, you know, get back to what was my dream back then. And I can start from it from scratch. So, yeah. And back in Italy, did you study film or did you do anything film no, related? Not at all. I was doing IT in high school and I hated it. I didn't like yeah. it. I literally, like, I barely passed high school. And yeah, I didn't do any filmmaking. I did watch a lot of films. I tried to get into a private school in Rome. I live like one hour away from Rome. From Rome, right? Yeah, yeah, one hour away from Rome, like by trains. It's pretty, you know, (laughs) close. But then I found out after it was kind of expensive. So I just left it. I didn't go. It was a script writing course, private course. And yes, I didn't approach it anymore. Was it like primary because of the price or was it also difficult to get accepted in there? No, no, they did accept me eventually. It's just the price was very high. I can't remember now. I don't know if I knew really the price. Can you compare it to a loan in here if it's like similar or even higher? It might have been a few cases, but yeah, it's like private. You don't get loans and stuff. Okay, Um, okay. You would have, have to pay other like one installment or even if it had been like different installments, it still would have been high for me. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. And what about some other universities, either in Rome or in Italy in general, with studying film? Are there many opportunities or not really? There are, especially. So there is a nice film culture in Italy. So many people uh, you know, go to universities or even if they don't go to university, they you know do indie stuff. 
but there are opportunities in Rome and in Northern Italy. But it's just, I was kind of outside of that world. I didn't really know how to move. And then I wasn't really confident. I wasn't like, okay, now I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to uni and roll. And again, to be fair, even because of my, you know, grades from high school, I don't even know if I would have got accepted. In London, I did a foundation year that helped me. But in Italy, I don't even know if I would have got accepted to the courses. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I was, as you mentioned, thinking about quite a long history and culture when it comes to filmography. So I can imagine that it's big in Italy. Yeah, no, it is. It is. But let's say the system is a little more... Here in UK is much easier to get mm-hmm. stuff. I don't remember how the organization is called to, you know, that helps you, you know, get into courses. You know, you enroll and stuff and then you can choose your universities. But there's not something like that in Italy. So you kind of have to inform yourself. It's a bit harder, let's say. Yeah. And then when you wanted to move to London, did you know that you want to go to London or were you also thinking about different countries or different cities? No, the London thing literally happened in a matter of months, so I didn't even realize it. I remember it was around August that I came to know that my cousin was living there, and I flew here in February. So, you know, realized I didn't do a part-time job, barely any money, so I just went. I mean, I was like, okay, there is London, let's go. That's where I decided. I always wanted to travel, but it was never something, you know, concrete. So that was a good thing for me. Mm-hmm. So what was your first impression of living in London? Did it meet your expectations or how was it? I didn't have any expectations. It was <laughs> so quick. I watched a bunch of YouTube videos of you know Italians living in London, all the things that they sell you. But you know, everybody's experience is different. The person say, oh, it's too expensive. The other person tells you, there's so many opportunities. It's kind of, you know, it's fluff. I just came and I made my own, you know expectations let's say Mm -hmm. but when i came i liked it a lot because again everything seems to be much easier getting jobs with university and i liked that a lot even because it gave me the opportunity to do many things that of course not having the experience you know i couldn't have done it if i was maybe elsewhere so then why did you decide to study specifically at middlesex so again, uh, when I enrolled, I think she had a choice of five universities you can send your application to. And I think it was probably one of the open days that told me it when I came. And now I can't remember how many universities accepted me out of the five, but Middlesex was probably one of the ones that saw me on the open day. Yeah, pretty much all BIM courses around have, you know, you have the kit hub where you can hire equipment to do short films and everything and nice facilities and probably I can't really remember but probably that's what sold me it's when I, you know, did the evaluation. No, it's I agree and understand because I think I heard it from more people that the first impression of the university was really powerful because it made them to decide to go there. Yeah. So I guess that's something that university does well. Yeah, yeah. They can definitely sell themselves, yeah. So I was studying in foundation year. I haven't done foundation year, so I don't really know what it's like. So how did you find it? I found it really useful, really, really useful. I can confidently say that many of the things that I did in foundation not only helped me for, you know, the following years, but there are things that I did on the foundation year that I didn't, you know, approach after. And I was kind of, you know, that because... If all the four years were like the foundation year, I feel like my knowledge about everything would be much higher because maybe the most solid year that I've done, it was really good. Doing film, my foundation year was media in general. And in the media foundation year, you have people not only doing films, but maybe doing VFX, all the kind of media and everything that has something to do with that. We did modules that cover pretty much everything. And yeah, it was pretty full. I really liked it. Uh, we did a lot of filmmaking wise. We did a lot of, you know, story pitching. We shot some things with, I mean, not the best cameras, but still something nice. And, you know, 
I consider it like part of the other years than the foundation. You helped me a lot. So is that something you would recommend? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, definitely. I'll be honest, I'm not the greatest fan of universities. Not the university itself, but how the system works about the film course, how it's approached, the programs and stuff. But it definitely helps. And the foundation year is definitely something that if you're, you know, at the beginning, it can help you a lot. Yeah. And do you remember how many people were there in your class? Because I'm curious how popular it is or how many people enroll? Uh, I think there were quite a lot, maybe around uh, 100, 100 and something. Oh, wow. I didn't expect that. You know, I thought again, that it would like, be like 20 or something. No, because again, when you have media, it's not like every course has its own foundation year. The foundation year is more like something in general. So you get people doing even photography. So film, photography, TV production, social media thing too. So you get all these people that want to do different courses. And how was it when it comes to the application process? Is it similar to when you want to get accepted into actually university, into bachelor's? Or is there, I don't know, easier to get there? Or in what way is it different? For the foundation? Yes. I don't know because I never ask people that only... I mean, I do know people that only apply to normal course, like three-year course, but I never ask them the, what the difference is. I don't know, I had to do right personal statements. I think it's pretty much the same. Yeah, you have to, I mean, as an international student, I have to hand in my translation of the high school diploma. As an international, I had to do the IELTS exam for the English language. Yeah. It sounds similar to the one for bachelors. Yeah, it might be the same, yeah. And I guess you have to pay for that year as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it at least cheaper or is it the same price? I think it's the same. But what helps me is that all the four years that I attended, I didn't get my tenants loans. I already did the tuition fees. Yeah. So it kind of balances because some people get both, you know, maintenance and tuition. So it is pretty high. I already did tuitions. So. Yeah, yeah. And it, like judging from what you said, that there are so many students from different courses, it sounds like that it gives you good connections for the beginning know so many people from different areas it does give you connections i didn't work directly with people from the foundation course but on my linkedin page i follow people that did like vfx for example and see that they're doing raids and you know i might call them if anything or if i know someone that needs some vfx work i might call them so that that's kind of a good thing because i got to know them yeah before we move on, what were like the final year project or final year exam? Yeah, I had to do a short film, like three or five minutes short film. And I remember there was this cool assignment. I don't remember the name of the module, but we had to set up a website with Wix and we had to write blogs about the experience doing the final assignment which will for me the short film so in the website you would have all the blogs and stuff right about you know how you came to do that you know yeah so that was, sounds interesting yeah i don't know if it was about the short film or about one essay that you had to you know blog about but yeah it was something like that. and on a short film did you get to pick what role you will specialize in yeah 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 it was me and two more people so it's like most mm -hmm. of the filmmakers at the beginning you do directing you do editing you do you might not have a dop so you do camera so but i was a director i wanted to be the director that was my oh. thing yeah sounds good moving to the actual bachelors when you started did you feel like that you were kind of in uh, advantage over your peers since you had some kind of background not really not really because i know that when you go into the bachelors even if, you know, there may be like 18, 19 year olds, they do have experience. So I actually felt, you know, not as good as them, maybe. Because, yeah, I didn't really have too much experience beside the academic assignments. I only had a couple of things. So I actually felt a little 
not free, but like I was like, so here the real things happen, so you have to keep up with them. It really kind of pushes you, but yeah, no, no, I, I didn't feel advantage or that. Yeah. So were you in the second year when the COVID happened? I was 2020, yeah, I was in the second year, yeah. It was in March, and it was literally, yeah, I shot my second year film in April, so it was... Oh, so you still managed to shoot it? We shot it. Did I shoot it just before? I can't remember. Yeah, the COVID happened in March, I remember, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, you see, my man just floaty. I don't think I shot it. <laughs> it happened in March. No, I mean, it's if you manage to shoot it, you are lucky then. Because yeah. remember in those times, it was a really crazy period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty crazy. I remember that, of course, most of the lessons were online. And that it was frustrating because as a filmmaker, you want to do you know, stuff. You know, want to be there, practical stuff, shoots. But yeah, it was just online Zoom stuff and yeah, it was a bit, it wasn't the best, let's say, yeah. And did you focus on directing? Yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been always focusing on directing. I appreciated also the editing, you know, lectures or workshops because, I mean, I've always known that as a director, you, you have to be pretty good at editing. And to be fair, I like it. I edit myself when it comes to videos, some promos, stuff like that. And I did follow, you know, the courses and yeah. How was then the short film in the end, despite the COVID? Was it still good in the app? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you see, I think we shot the first year, one short film, second year I didn't shoot and then I shot in the third year. Oh, okay, so I guess you had some alternative exercise instead. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had to shoot stuff in our home, you know, environment, basically in the house, stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I mean, you don't have many options with such conditions and you still need to do something and kind of adapt. Something. Yeah, I mean, filmmaking is about creativity. You can literally you know, take the phone, shoot something, you can be creative. It's just, you know, the exercise is considered. Like, in your room, in your house, shoot this, shoot that. And was like, oh, my God. I mean, I live with other people in the house. And then, you know, like... But at the same time, I mean, at that time, when it happened, and no one knew what is going on, when it's going to end, if it's going to end, it was a really tough period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was pretty tough. Especially because you get frustrated because, I mean, you want to get on sets and meet people and shoot more and more and if you couldn't before because maybe you know it's hard already now it's just impossible because even big productions they're not shooting because of covid because they want to limit the number of people because of covid with the masks yeah it was pretty frustrating what i did during covid was i wrote a lot i kind of did film reviews sort of thing yeah, because, I mean, writing is the only thing that you can do, really. I tried to do a, a short film with one of my housemates. Literally, the thing that everybody did, which is, like, their routine during COVID. Like, everybody did that. No, I mean, it's that's good to keep yourself productive <laughs> and definitely at least do something that is related to what you are doing and maybe beneficial in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as you mentioned before, it was said that it's depressing because as students, you are kind of excited to make a short film and hoping that it will at least help you to open the doors to the industry. For example, by sending to festivals if it's successful. And when there was a COVID, you couldn't film it. It was a very sad situation. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we all read. So how was the third year? I guess yeah. in the third year, did you finally manage to make a short film? Yeah, the third year was pretty good because from the second year, me and a friend of mine, a course mate of mine, Andrea, we already knew that we were going to do something together. So, you know, it's a big thing that in the final year of the film course, you have to do a short film. So we were like, from the second year, we were like, okay, we're going to do it together now. Sorry, what's and your producer? Producer, Andrea. Yeah, Andrea. He produced my short film. 
and is Italian as well. So we were getting ready since before the start of the third year. We were, you know, writing. We wrote the short film and we were organizing ourselves. So that was good. So the third year was really just about the short film. But yeah, still was a bit overwhelming because I try to work as much as I can, finding jobs on the side. Without mentioning, yeah, working part-time because I have to support myself. So it was a bit overwhelming because you want to do... I'm a director, but, you know, I'm not Martin Scorsese, so I have to be the gaffer on this short film, the PA on that commercial, this and that, plus, you know, the assignment, plus working. So it was, yeah, still overwhelming. But it was good because me and Andrea, we knew, like, oh, we're going to do this no matter what. And we found the crew, everything. And we shot it at end of February and beginning of March it was six shooting days, which is a lot, but it's because the location only gave us a few hours per day. So we have to spread during multiple days. And yeah, no, that was a great experience. I learned a lot from it and I'm really glad they did it. And yeah. Did you have some special locations since they gave you just a bit of time or where were you filming? So my short film, The Enemy, was shot in the Hanlon Town Hall, which is mm-hmm. right by Middlesex University, because we needed this grand office slash receiving space for this guy who's running as mayor of London. So we felt like that was pretty good, but we could only be there for six hours a day. And, you know, the shoot time starts just after two hours of setup, so that meant only four hours of shooting or so. That was impossible for all the shots that we had. So you had to be done during three days, only that bit. So did you manage in such a short time to film what you wanted in there? Yeah, 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 we did. Probably, I don't know, probably cut some shots, but I like to take my time because I want to spend time with actors. And yeah, we managed to get all of it, all of what was planned. I was really happy to have such a great location. I was really happy to have like all the crew there. Everybody was great. And, you know, I actually received compliments from one of the secondary actors because he said, oh, this shoot is so professional. Sometimes I get like on professional shoots, they're unorganized, but we were like on point. The production was pretty, pretty well, professional. That, yeah. yeah. And it's well, also yeah. quite a good location next to university. Town hall. Yeah, yeah, that was great. That was great for the equipment. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, we did it all on the street there. We shot across London, but definitely for like all the movement, that was great. That was pretty great. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Just a quick one. If you enjoy our podcast, please give us a review on your favorite podcast app, subscribe, or share it with your friends. For more information, visit the show notes. Thank you, and back to the show. As you mentioned before, that you were trying to find some jobs on the side while studying and working part-time. Did you manage to find some useful gigs? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially last year, my schedule was pretty dense. Weirdly enough, just after I started shooting, after I shot my grad film, I got on a lot of projects on a monthly basis. I mean, I would say two projects. I mean, of course, some months more, some months less. But yeah, it got pretty, pretty dense. I did a lot of editing and, you know, that's my main thing that I do besides being a director. Director, I see it more as, you know, higher thing that, you know, it takes time. I want to, you know, do it when I'm inspired. I don't have to just shoot products because I have to, you know, it has to marinate there a little bit and then I can do something nice. But still want to be on set and especially, you know, you need to connect to network. So you still have to be on it. So yeah, do a lot of AD. I've got director's friends and, you know, they, they call me when they have things. Yeah. Can you try to introduce the role a bit? What does the first AD do for someone? Oh, yeah. Does it know? So the first AD stands for first assistant director. And its responsibilities are creating the schedules for the shoots and basically make sure that yeah, within the whole production, the schedule is, you know, followed and you don't go over. And 
because on big productions, for example, if you go over, that means money for the location, that means actors, talents, you have to pay everyone. So you want to keep it on schedule. And also because sometimes directors like to have a rhythm for the day when things are too, you know, relax is not good, you know, for anyone really. You need someone to be, you know, telling people, okay, we got half an hour to get this done and stuff like that. And also, as I say, it is a way of getting all the problems out of the director's back and help the production with things, basically with the crew. You keep the departments communicating. For example, if the call time is at 7 a.m., shoot call is at 9, and it's 8.30, you need to know that, you know, the lead actor has to be on makeup already. You need to know when he's getting the costume done, and you need to know when the camera department is going to be done. I mean, you already know, you tell them that they have to be done by this time, so yeah. Yeah, so what is it that you enjoy about this role? What I enjoy about being a first CD is seeing the product coming to, you know, its end. It's uh, basically throughout the whole day you are struggling to, you know, get things done and at the end of the day everything is on schedule, everyone is happy and there's a nice reward. It's a nice reward, yeah. Yeah, but also sounds quite stressful and like a job yeah. that people may hate you on a set if you are, you know, shouting yeah. and trying to get them... Okay. Yeah, well, the thing is, now we're talking more like in the end of maybe even undergo, we're not talking about, you know, studios and stuff. So you're not screaming at people. Some people do. I don't because, I mean, you can do it just as much as telling people, no, we have to get this done. If you don't do it within the uh, slot to time, we're going to have to cancel shots later. But the shouting is more for like bigger productions because this with time is money. But it is a lot of stress because you need to know what's going to happen at all times. And you need to know when everything is happening at what time, what time is finishing. And you have to know, you know, have to be maybe a bit more assertive sometimes. But again, not shouting because that is going to change the whole vibe of the shoot and there's bad for everyone. And this is going against your responsibilities. You want everyone to be in a nice environment. You can be assertive, but it doesn't mean you have to be, you know, a bad person, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And can you try to share some tips for people who want to find work as a side jobs as well? Maybe where to look for, how to apply, some tips for CV or interviews if you didn't. Yeah. As a first CD or in general? In general, for example, when you are still student and you want to get experience in a field, what comes to your mind or how did you do that? So what I would suggest is don't be shy. I don't say it because the, it directly helps you to be a filmmaker, but because talking with people, getting friends is one of the main things to get on set. Because being nice with people, they will call you back. And, you know, I know many people that would hire again people that were nice and did a good job rather than high-end professionals, but they were, like, kind of not so good people, you know. But definitely, you know, don't be shy and be an honest person and, you know, show your interest. Don't push it too much. Just say that you're available. And, yeah, that's it. I mean, you could tell you, of course, get a CV, but everybody can do that, but. I don't think that's one of the main things because most of the shoots that I got were like through getting a shoot and that, you know, you talk with people, you do a good job and that they will call you for another thing. That's the main thing. That's how it works. That's on the industry same as to be working. So was basically. it like through your network and connections <clears throat> rather than finding it online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you do find some things online. For example, there's sites such as Start now, Mandy, where you can start to find some things and you can get with a CV there and people, you know, will see you, they will hire you. Some things paid, some things unpaid, but I don't know of people that live off of it, to be fair, because everyone in the film industry is a freelancer pretty much, you know, and word of mouth is what works the best, really. So 
can you say what type of projects you worked on? Was it like short film or music videos or what was it? I've done short films, different roles, of course, directed, but also been a PA, I've been a runner, I've done behind the scenes photographs, I've been a gaffer. So it sounds like a diverse range of roles. Yeah, yeah, because again, you just have to get as many things as you can at the beginning, and then you, the people will call it. That's for short films. Even for other formats, music videos, AD, first AD, what I talked about before. I've been a gaffer once, runner. I was a first AD Saturday and Sunday on a music video, actually. And we need to be more as well on a short film proof of concept that we're shooting. And then I've done promos, let's say promos for brands and like businesses. I've been a director. I've been a runner on some higher end stuff or corporate videos, interviews. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a broad range of experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then he kind of narrows down to, you know, it might be the director is the main thing then. You can be first said, yeah, maybe some production things around, but yeah, that's it. Yeah. And can you say in what way, or can you try to compare it when you are on a shoot outside of university to shoots at university? Mm -hmm. If it's similar or in what ways is it different? Right. It depends on what level we're talking about, because you can find some shoots at university that are pretty professional. But you can also find shoots outside of university that are not really professional, vice versa. I can't really tell you. Maybe the only thing is generally outside of university, people are a bit, take it a little more seriously. Yeah, because people in university, that's part of the, my comment on the programs and the system is people on sets in university, they, many people care about the grades. But thinking about the grade doesn't necessarily mean you're doing a good job on set, you know, because you just have to report to the teacher and that doesn't really, you know, mean what you've done on set. So maybe the grade thing might have an impact on some people in university. But when you're outside of uni, you just find everyone is more like on it. Probably that's it. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. So coming back to the university, how was the short film in the third year in the end? Was it good? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm i never happy. I found many... You're perfect. Them, yeah, imperfections. But, I mean, I'm still learning because that was my third short film. And I'm definitely still learning. I'm a beginner. And, you know, I have to learn a lot. And especially because English is not my first language. So I need to kind of articulate myself much better, I think. And yeah, I, I saw many perfections, but that's good because, you know, I saw them. Now I can work on them on my next short film. I can maybe isolate them and focus on those. That's actually what I did for the short film. I saw the imperfections on my previous short film and things that I didn't like about it. I think I didn't do well. And I focus on those for the short film, like camera movements, like how to talk with the DOP and, you know, come up with camera movements that can, you know, project the emotion that you want, kind of thing. And yeah, it did won an international online film awards. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I mean, it's not, it's just one. My producer is following. I left it at that one. I was proud of it, but I know that, I mean, it doesn't really mean I'm the best, I'm the worst, you know, it's just, you know, broad indication. So you and send it to some festivals? Yeah, yeah, we did. We had a budget of 200 pounds for the film festivals. And yeah, it was nominated by a few. It was finalist for one. It won one last time I checked. Now I will have to check. Because to be fair, yeah, with all the things I've been doing, I kind of forgot about it. Learn my experience and now let's move on. Let's do some more stuff, you know. Yeah. And out of curiosity, what's the average fee to enter the festival? 15 pounds. Okay. Like that. So yeah. sounds like a good budget, as you mentioned, that you could enter yeah. quite a few. Yeah, it dep I mean, it's, it depends what your strategy is. Some productions may have 1K, they just send it everywhere. Or some production, they just send it to film festival that allow you to 
get on bigger like rain dance stuff like that so quality rather than quantity you know yeah i mean if you go film freeway which is the website where you can apply to film festivals you can even do the membership and on, on each festival you apply to you get this calendar so it's even better and did you have like a strategy what specific festivals you applied to or did you just go no, for... not really not really we were just let's see what are the ones we could have a shot at and uh, we can apply to that it was also a question of deadline because we didn't apply straight away we waited a few months but now it's something that i will definitely apply on my next short film to be a bit more strategic on how i approach the festival circuits because my plan is do the short film next and then level up and work towards my feature. I don't know if I will do one short film and then one feature, but let's see how it works. You know, I have to work towards that. I have to be a bit more strategic. Yeah. So before we move from topic of university, can you share some tips or advice for someone who's studying or wants to study how to take advantage of studying? Yeah, um, what I said before, um, don't be shy and hang with your people, with filmmakers, people want to make stuff, and don't be scared of low budgets, don't be scared of this project won't go anywhere, just, you know, do stuff, and, you know, because you can learn, I mean, you have to learn, it's not like, oh, I want to do this big thing, no, you have to learn, it's a process, you know, and then... Eventually, when you're ready, when it will be time, you can do, you know, some good projects. But don't be scared of doing anything at all. Yeah, so good. So how did you start planning your way into industry? That's a bit a complicated matter because as I live in London, I plan on moving to Los Angeles. Oh, sorry, you're planning to? Yeah, moving to California, Los Angeles. Mm, wow. Yeah, I mean, my partner lives there, so... I have to go there, right? I, <laughs> I don't want to. I have to. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I want to go there. I yeah. want to go there. I already wanted to go there. I mean, I love traveling. I mean, I came to London. I will again. And yes, the filmmaking industry is good even, you know, in UK and in other countries. I just want to go there. I don't think because it's LA, it's better. But I do want to move there. And so one of the first steps would be to move there and, you know, get a job there and you know see how the area is get some connections and now they've got you know a showreel to show and you know some experience that's probably gonna help me but my main thing now is thinking about my next short film basically so i've got a few producer friends and i'm not still considering but i'm still kind of starting to look around to see who could help me you know do the next step on my short film my next short film that we can send around the world and yeah so that's my thing and do you know what is the time scale when you want to move there it depends i mean visa and stuff right so there's a bit of question so i can tell oh, yeah. right now. because i we- thought maybe it's like moving in let's say two months or if it's like five years i want to go there as soon as possible to be fair i can't really predict it but i would love to go within you know, the first half of next year, 2024. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that sounds exciting. Fingers crossed that it works yeah. out. So do you plan that short film to film it here or there? I don't know. I've got a few scripts. One of them is set in Italy. You see, it is already a little bit all over the place. And I've got a few more scripts that can be shot either places. doesn't really matter. But yeah, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. It depends on how my life will work out, to be honest. Because as I said before, if I have to be a director and I take it really seriously, I need to be, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take my time. I'm not rushing pre-production, I'm not rushing the location scouting. No, it has to be done, you know, properly. And I have to have the time to cast the right actors and work with them. I'm not giving myself a deadline as of yet, but I'm still trying to see what of my scripts I want to develop. Yeah, and isn't it going to be difficult or challenging to stand out in LA as a filmmaker? 
Probably, yes. Yes. But I mean, I, I want to stay true to myself. Maybe that's got to work. I want to do my own thing. You know, I don't want to copy. I mean, filmmaking is about copying, but in a broader term, I don't want to copy other filmmakers, other people. I'm just going to do what I like. And yeah. So you said you want to move there, but what is it that you are actually working on now? Now I'm. I have a few projects here and there. I mean, I've got some freelance stuff. I've got a shoot tomorrow of this short film proof concept. I've got one. So is it freelance filmmaker? Yeah, as a first ID. Yeah. yeah. And one at the beginning of May. And the director that is directing the short film at the beginning of May, actually, just told me he has a commercial in May. So one more thing. I've got a few talks with friends about things that they want to do, develop. Also, I mean, with the company we have, now we are at the stage where we want to, we are expanding little by little. We are getting a deal here, a deal there, and we have to, you know, because I was away for a month and a half now in LA. I came oh. back in the first of April, so we're still doing some work with the company, producing, but, you know, meeting in person is different. That's where you can, really, you know, come up with things, talk about, projects and stuff and as i said before we were we are developing this podcast that we want to do and yeah we are basically waiting for things to you know unfold now we had a few things cooking and i would say that what i would like to do next is like to direct another promo another commercial because i'm exploring also that path commercials yeah. and yeah and can you introduce a bit your company Like, how did you, why did you, with whom did you start it? Yeah, sure, sure. So, Studio Odyssey, the remote company, started last year when me and Joao, which is one of my course mates, he's a DOP, were found each other on a film set of this Bollywood film where I was a spark, which is electrician, uh, helping with lighting, stuff like that. And he was helping the art department. We didn't each other much in the university for some reason but we found you know ourselves there I, i mean we knew each other so we started talking and we started hanging out and then i wanted to shoot something for the workplace i am at which is bar i'm a bartender on the side and i wanted to shoot a commercial for them because i was i wanted to approach again the commercial i wanted to explore that path so we did something for free for them Uh, where he helped me out and the manager really liked it so he actually paid us to do something else for them and he proposed to me like they had this idea of creating a company and me I accepted straight away because I thought rather than looking for jobs to apply why don't we create the jobs ourselves you know we can talk with businesses we can make deals we can have people help us out And, you know, we can make our own stuff. And from then, we spoke with Ellie, another course mate at Middlesex, and we proposed him to join us. He joined, and from then, August of last year, 2022, we started meeting a lot in the smallest office ever, and we worked a lot on stuff. We did some corporate things, we did music videos, We did that commercial for the place I work at. We are developing nice connections and partnerships and we're pretty excited about it because, you know, we know a lot of talented people that help us shoot things and we're also expanding on social media and content creation stuff and we have people that help us out on that. So as I said, we are expanding little by little. We love to shoot content. I direct it. They join Ellie, they help me do things. We also all together produce, you know, everything basically. And we do our own content. So we see basically the stocks are going up little by little. And yeah, yeah, we're pretty excited about it. Yeah. So it's not like a regular thing yet. Well, the, it is a full time job basically because, I mean, it's not a nine to five at the office, but you always have things to sort out all the time. Filmmaking is about problem solving. You have problems coming the whole time, so you have to solve them. 
and they exponentially work as you get more projects and projects. So, you know, Scandal fills my days with other things. And, and yeah. And is there like a specific niche that you focus on or the company focuses on? Or is it content curation in general? We did a lot of food commercials and promos for businesses. We did bars, clubs and stuff. So that's one of our niches. Now we're not big enough to have different niches. And then we did commercials. We actually work with Middlesex. They hired us to do work for them on some, it's called Barnett's Business Growth Program. And we shot interviews with Middlesex students and business owners and how the collaboration went. And yeah, we are still really happy about it because we were the first production company that basically did a partnership with them and we are helping them. And yeah, that went really well and I can't wait to do something else with them. So where people can find the company, I guess on social media and website? Yeah, definitely. So the website is called studioodysseyproductions.com. And the Instagram, yeah, Studio Odyssey Productions. You can see because the logo is a black background with Studio Odyssey red and white. And yeah, there we post our behind the scenes. We love to do that so we can get, you know, the audience to see what we do. It's not just the products that you see the logo. It's like us working. You can see Joao handling the camera. You can see Ellie, you know, turning the light on. You can see me talking with people, you know, so that's pretty nice. Yeah, I will put the links to the show notes. Oh, uh, appreciate it. People want to reach out or something. Yeah, yeah. And what are the goals for the future with the company? To grow, to establish itself? Yeah, no, the goals are to establish ourselves within the UK and outside. Definitely with me moving to LA, you know, create another branch over there and start directing stuff over there. That would be my personal goal. And... Also, the three of us to detach ourselves from the producing side of it and to focus on our own fields, me directing and the two of them to be director of photography rather than doing the whole thing and also directing and doing camera work. Yes, because the next question was what are you going to do once you move to LA? So you want to expand in there as well? Yeah, yeah, I do want to expand. There's a really delicate matter because it's really, it's kind of hard to move to one country and, you know, start a business and do many different things. So there's going to be a slower process because if I'm with my partner there, that's going to be where I live. So I have to establish myself as a person first, you know, to settle myself. And then I can think about, okay, now I'm going to look for shoots and I'm going on sets as a director and now I'm going to establish my company so everything will take its own time to you know to happen yeah and is your partner also a filmmaker in LA no no so first of all her name is Jenny and she's studying to become an attorney oh okay wow yeah 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 I thought maybe if she was a filmmaker would help you with connections well no if I break the law she can defend the, 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 the... <laughs> 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 no but it's still helpful with contracts and agreements and everything yeah 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 I mean you must have good time management because as you said you I are... don't I don't no <laughs> I it's very hard for me to manage everything yeah it's a bit overwhelming but I always try to look at the positive side of things and I see this as a me building you know Toughening mess came for, you know, like big jobs, you know, where you have to deal with tough people, people with egos and problem solving. So I don't see this, oh, I don't want to cry. I say, oh, there's too many things happening. I can do it. I see this most of a training kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. I meant, because you said you work still in a bar, you do some freelance jobs and you also work in a production company. Yeah, and I... And do you travel to LA for holidays? Yeah, I mean, I never really take holidays. I still do my work remotely, like, you know, production, talking with people in London, organizing the shoot. Yeah, it's pretty hard. I'll be honest. I try to do my best. Sometimes it is a bit, you know, overwhelming. I try to keep promises when I talk with people, like, 
uh, we need to shoot this. We're going to get the things done. Try to do it at my best. But sometimes, yeah, I feel like I should, you know, lower my work intake sometimes. Don't overwork yourself. Yeah. And to end up kind of on a different topic, how was your holidays? How did you find it in LA? Oh, thank you for asking. It was great. I went there the day before Valentine's Day. Because the last time I went, I actually left right before Valentine's. That was like bad. So <laughs> at least I was like, we get Valentine's. Now it was great because I love California. Despite the weather was quite bad. It rained a lot. It? it rained a lot, like more than London. And you would get sunny days here and there, but not like what you expect from California. We went to a few cities. We went to San Francisco, Berkeley, Santa Barbara. Yeah, we went to three places in LA. Uh, it was great because I was, you know, with my partner. It was a long time since I saw her and, you know, it was just great. I'm planning you know, the next time I will see her again. Yeah, yeah. Sounds great. Out of curiosity, was it expensive there or what is it oh, like? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. More That's expensive what... than here? Yeah, I mean, it depends. Yes, I would say yes. The thing is, because we got the pound here. And the pound is slightly stronger than the dollar. So if you see, for example, something costing $20 and the same thing costs $17, you're like, oh, it's cheaper in England. But it's not just because yeah. the money is stronger. But in general, see, yeah, it's more expensive because first of all, you do need a car and, you know, everything that comes with the insurance, gas. When in London, you know, we got the underground, the system is pretty good, buses mm-hmm. and stuff. And then, I mean, also parking is a big thing. You should get a car. Parking is really expensive. And then, yeah, I feel like people like to spend money there a lot more for some reason. I don't know. Maybe they can, at least six system. I don't know. But sounds like it made a good impression since you want to move there. No, no, I do. I do. I mean, I've got the filter of my parent labor living there. So everybody thinks better, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, of But course. Definitely. I see myself being there. And I'm sure, like, I can do some great things there. I'm pretty confident. Because, I mean, I just work a lot. I think if, you know, you put the work in, the hours in, something eventually comes. And I see that a good environment for me to, you know, develop myself in these terms. So, why not? not? That makes sense. Well, Mick, I would finish it for today. So, I would just thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure to chat with you. And I will wish you good luck in your career in moving to LA and with your company. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And congrats on this podcast. I hope it kicks off and, you know, you get something really good out of it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Produced By. Subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast app, leave a review or send us your feedback. For more information about the host, links from the episode and ways to connect with us, visit the show notes. If you know someone who would be an ideal guest for our podcast, please get in touch. Thank you and see you soon.